Hey, welcome to another edition of Kyle Meredith with. It's the interview series presented by WFPK at WFPK.org, Consequence, and the Consequence Podcast Network. Thanks as always for making your way here, checking the series out. You know what to do. Like what you see, what you hear, hit that subscribe button. I put out three new interviews every single week. So it's a great way to keep up with your favorite artist and one of my all-time favorites I get to talk with once again, Johnny Resnick. The Goo Goo Dolls are back. Hello, sir. Hi, how are you? Good. It's good to see you again. You have a brand new record called Chaos and Bloom. The last time that you and I talked, you were telling me that you wanted to go back sort of, I, I don't know if we said to your roots, but we said to an earlier sound with this one. And, and yeah. I didn't know exactly what that meant at the time, but but you've done it. This album is instantly become one of my favorites already. Uh, what, what made you, what, what set that in motion? Why did you want this record to be this record? Um... You know what I wanted to I wanted to produce the record. You know, after I started writing, I was like, okay, I want to produce this because it's like I'm hearing it in my head. Sometimes uh your original intent can get lost in translation when you work with a lot, you know, say I hire a producer, you know, you give them you give them a lot of um power or an influence over what the sound and the direction of the album can be. You know, um, at and at its best, because obviously, I used other producers on this record to help me out with with certain things. Um, you know, so I was wanting the people's other people's input at certain points. You know, but I wanted to sort of still have final say and control over what was going on. Yeah, yeah. It's um, it feels like there's a little bit of like I don't know betting on yourself uh at this point. <laughs> <laughs> and, and i mean that as a compliment too like I, i'll quickly use an example uh tears for fears put out a record this year and they did the thing where they worked with a lot of songwriters yeah. and and over the last decade and it just didn't work out they scrapped those songs they said what happens if we just try to write the album and exactly. it ends up being an amazing record and i think that's what i'm getting to with what you've done here because this again hits on everything that I like about your song. Like I can hear your songwriting and there's nothing against the last few records. I like them too. They were produced records where this one feels something more direct and personal, I guess. Yeah. Well, it was definitely more direct and it was more personal. And there were a lot of, um, I, you know, I'm at a point in my career where I'm like, I love going out and touring and I love, you know, um, connecting with our audience is always very very important um you know but i was I'm, I'm i wasn't as concerned about what the record company thought or what these people thought or whatever you know because it you know um i just i wanted to do something that i was i i'm very proud of all the records that we've done but um this one had to be more like Okay, it doesn't have to be, I don't have to have a big hit single on it or try to write a big hit single on it, you know, or something like that. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And I did want to, I did want to bring it back into a, a situation where it was like, no, I, I want this to be more edgy. I want this to be a little more angsty. And, and I think, I think a lot of that came from, you know, um, you know, kind of being trapped inside for a couple of years. You know, and 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 then and then it, it just you know, interestingly enough, just watching the way the world has changed so much since I put a record out a couple of years ago, you know, three years ago or whatever, and then and then getting to this point. You know. Yeah, you know, it's it's interesting the way you put that. You know, the the angstiness maybe being from being trapped inside a little bit because it made me think, especially when you guys were coming up. Uh, you know your era of bands a lot of them said the angst come you, you look at seattle they were always trapped inside you know, yeah. <laughs> I don't know if there's a parallel there but it seems like that's an interesting way that you put that in the same way that you might have put that 30 years yeah. ago you know well it's, it's uh yeah i mean it, it, it was very it was a very weird time you know and it did it, it definitely i think has affected you know the psyche of the world you know and and uh you know, interestingly enough, I was I was listening to that that the latest Arcade Fire record about a month ago, and I was like, oh, this is a pandemic record. <laughs> you know, it really just felt like that. And uh, but 
but you know, I'm, uh, you know we, were, we were done with this a month ago but um, yeah just it, it, it's, it's hard not to be affected by what's going on in the world right now yeah it's hard it's hard not to I mean I think a lot of music now is very very sort of um, escapist in nature you know um, and I didn't really want to be that I didn't really want to do that well if there's any singular chord that spells out exactly what you're saying the opening of uh, day after day yeah <laughs> which I, it might be my favorite moment on the record that song I mean that's for what we've heard from you in the past few years uh this one is sort of jumps out of nowhere on it I love it, it like I said it, I think it's my favorite and and for anybody who hasn't heard it there's a creepiness to those opening chords and the feel to it but it, it eventually does open up yeah um but but I think what you're saying is that really seems to erupt in that song a lot yeah you know that 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 was definitely uh definitely one of the darker moments that was definitely one of the darker moments we got up in the morning and i'm sitting there with a piano bing 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 and then i'm recording it on my phone and i'm like okay what are you gonna say and it's just you know it it's sort of like yeah it kind of rolls up i don't really like making political statements but it's just it's it just sort of uh i think that song kind of encapsulates the kind of the zeitgeist of what's going on in our society at this point you know um you know the division between people and the and and um you know the unbearable feeling of being completely out of control you know people hate that i hate being i hate feeling like i'm not in control you know <laughs> but um you know and and it's sort of all wrapped up in this nice little package where the chorus comes in and it's like it's like oh what okay we can just yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know? and then it's kind of like then you sit and listen to the lyrics and i always loved songs like that i could like slip this kind of dark lyric or something where you're trying to say something uh without being too obvious you slip it in under a catchy piece of music it's kind of like you know and then it sticks to your brain yeah. it's a good balance it's a good balance on that song right there that's a, it was it was cool it was cool kind of hearing that 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 type of darkness you know within this record and and maybe that goes back to the you know what we were talking about at the beginning too because you, we, i don't know when you decided that you wanted to produce a record when you decided what kind of record that you wanted to make did you find that that then did direct even what type of songs that you did write yeah yeah i mean it's like i got together with our engineer chris and uh we just kind of sat in a studio and it's just like playing with drum machines and loops and all this kind of stuff and just like just playing free you know um building beats on a little keyboard doing things like that and um um working on the music and then and then i i decided it would be a really cool idea to uh, get everybody out in the woods together and uh, and record it record as much of it live as possible you know um, within our abilities within our capacity to do that um, and it was like I I was listening to a lot of our live recordings at that time and um, and I was like well, there's a certain kind of aggression in the live versions of these songs. You know, they're always a little faster. The guitar sounds are a little heavier. Um, you know, and there's a certain there's a certain kind of not recklessness, but there's a, a little more abandon in them. You know, so so I was like, well, at the very least, I want to get the drums and the bass, and I'll play along. But it was very much like the three principles in the band just kind of like playing and playing and playing and making 30 takes of a song and trying to get that push and pull and and trying to you know we recorded it on tape a lot of it and um trying to get that push and that pull and that sort of like well this might this might come off the rails kind of feel at any moment and then you know that was a lot of fun and 
I was I allowed myself, and I, I went over budget because of it, um, which is why I consider myself a crap producer because I went over budget. <laughs> but but um, I I allowed myself to play and experiment when other producers will not allow that to happen, you know, because you know there's not a lot of money um, taking a lot of time to make you know you, you can't make records the way you used to you know um they don't have the budgets but you know we did okay and 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 um i just allowed myself the time and the freedom to go you know what i want to hang that amp off the ceiling and and do just experiment with sound you know and and you know and dig dig into production notes from like a lot of old records and things like that and like like find out where like how did they do that how did they make that sound like that well let's let's try to duplicate that and then let's tweak it a little bit you know what i mean it was just things like that there's a certain i think this record definitely one of the things i did not want to do was just edit the crap out of the drums which is a very modern thing to do you know um you know and i did i did i did feel like I grabbed a little, I grabbed a little bit of uh, ground back for the band. You know what I mean? I'm <laughs> like, like I'm taking it back now. <laughs> you know? It's a rock and roll record. I mean, it I think that's very it, rock and roll record. It is a rock and roll record, and and again, I think that's one of the things that I love so much about it is is that it it is warm. And it is, you know, it's, you can hear the moments in there, even if I don't know what they are, those moments that you're talking about, you know, it's just sort of, you can hear the room a little bit. I mean, that's, that's the records that I love so much. You know, when I went back and I was saying, you know, you bet on yourself. And I think that just goes further along in that. I, I, I'm sure I also could have been more on the nose and said that you are the answer. Uh, one of the actual song titles in this that, yeah. that works really well. And that song right there, um, you know, as you're talking about looking at other records, was Elton John on your mind on that one? Because it feels like that's one of those I, inescapable things. Yeah, I mean, you know what? Actually, that was that song came about. Craig, the the drummer, was sitting there just banging on a piano uh, out in the live room, just enjoying himself because he plays piano and a lot of other instruments. And it was just, and it was, it was kind of like I was like, man, that's really cool. And I just started sort of singing over the top of what he was playing and then we just kind of put it all together and then um definitely tried to give it like that classic classic kind of feel you know which was you know um yeah which i thought was interesting because like i listen to that song and i'm just like yeah this song could have been from the 70s or the 80s or or now or whatever you know but it was like I just I just thought it was it was a chance to really get into something like I feel like that song was very well written you know <laughs> whether it was on purpose or by accident it just all just sort of it's one of those things where it just kind of fell together really nicely you know That's and what I did I did have to get help I had to at some point I had to go okay and the point that I it was that was at was when I went into the studio to sing all the lyrics, and uh, and I went, I I can't produce my own vocals, so so I had to bring in um, a guy named Greg Wattenberg, who who I've worked with a lot. You know, he and I have written a ton of songs together and collaborated on a lot of different things, and. Um, it was just so so exciting to work with him again after a few years because it's like you know he just has this command with vocals you know he he can get the best performance out of me you know which i couldn't do myself i couldn't be objective enough so it was good to have him there yeah mission accomplished on that one that's a big moment there's a line in it searching for truth can be a fool's game yeah stands out pretty pretty good on that one and you st I, st I guess I don't know if I was looking for threads. I guess I, because of my job, I'm always looking for threads and themes. But uh, but that starts to seem to be almost like a thesis line of this album. Am I close? Do you, do you, do you sort of see it like that? 
I mean, I just wonder where we're going. I just wonder where we're going, like, you know, as a people, you know, as a human race, all those kind of things. I just, I, you know, as a society, as, as you know, and, um, you know, and it's like I have a five-year-old now, and it's it's kind of, when I think about the world that, that is out there for her, you know, it, it gives me anxiety <laughs> because I, you know, am I doing anything to make that world a little better for her? I don't know. I don't know. I, you know, I definitely feel like life, life is maybe getting harder for, for our kids. You know, it may wind up being more difficult. Um, there seems to be this, this, this mad dash to make human beings obsolete, you know, which, which, which is really unsettling to me, you know, because they're, we're, you know, I think that the, the power and the money in this world are starting to become concentrated into fewer and fewer hands. And, um, you know, it's, it's becoming harder to be a normal average human being, you know, just, you know, what are you supposed to do? It's like, you know, um, you know, I just, I just feel like we need to reprioritize certain things in this, in this country to make ourselves a better nation, emphasizing more education, you know, and funding for education, not, not, not keeping it away from people and, and, you know, so that, to me, those, those, that, that is a really important thing, you know, plus, plus work, and you know this, it's like work, work means security, but it also means dignity and um, the ability to, to make the people around you make their lives better. And um, that was a very uh, scary thought during the pandemic was like, oh my God, like I never realized how much meaning uh, my, my work put into my life, whether anybody liked my music or not. Um, but just that thought of like, am I ever going to be able to take care of my family? Like, I mean, like in the future, like how long is this going to go on? Where, where are we heading? You know, like, um, luckily it seems like we're, we're going to be okay. I think America has collectively just like, it's the only disease ever in the history of mankind where we just said, ah, fuck it. We're done with it. Who cares? <laughs> you know, <laughs> this seems to be like, it's just like everyone decided. <laughs> That's ah, not that important, you know. And um, so, whatever. It's that's that might be. You're right. That might be the weirdest part of the era that we're in. Is that it's like we, you know, everybody saw the elephant in the room at first, and now we've just kind of pushed the elephant over back to the corner and went, "What elephant?" Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, what you're, you're like, "What about. elephant? There's no elephant in this room." <laughs> All right. Meanwhile. Meanwhile. We're mutating at an alarming rate. I just, you know, I mean just like the the yeah i mean i don't know to me to me the music had to say something without pun put like trying to inflict change on your audience mm -hmm. it's, it's just my observations and it's like take them for what they're worth well even that first single uh yeah i like you yeah when i first heard it you know, I, I don't always pick up on the lyrics right away. I'm, I'm a rhythm and melody guy as far as my bass, right? Like I have to really concentrate on the words. But uh, so it wasn't it wasn't that I, you know, heard that and went, OK, here's a here's here's a play, a reflection on on celebrity, on yeah. social media culture. Once yeah. I figure that out, once you see the music video, very fun music video, you know, of course, that opens that song up to being so much more. But I, I, I think I'm just echoing what you're saying right there about how you, you know, can approach these songs because it's a fun song. But it also, yeah. you're right. I, I, you know, my my kid, my son is uh, is 14. Luckily, he's not entrenched in uh, in social media culture. I know plenty about it because of my gig here. But uh, but that is that's one of the weird things. And uh, I, was there was there like. I don't know. Was there anything specific that set it off for you to, to, you know, become the lyrics that you did? Um, you know, what? I kept hearing so much from 
everybody um, during during the recording process about TikTok, you know. So I'm like, okay, well, I mean, you know, um, well, I better go check this out, you know, because I avoid social media. I just I don't want to bother with it. Um, <clears throat> But TikTok, and then and then I was working in a studio where there were a lot of TikTok artists coming into these studios and working with other writers, and it just looked exhausting. And I thought, how does this work? You know, it's interesting. But then you know you get into the whole concept of influencers and like, you know, people become famous for doing nothing. You know, and. Uh, but there's so many incredibly talented people out there, you know? And, uh, you know, sometimes I feel like social media is, is, is a freak show circling the drain, <laughs> you know, going down to the lowest common denominator. Now, that being said, there is some pretty amazing stuff, you know? Well, I can make a better blueberry muffin now because of, you know, some some 15 second video i have no, you know whatever but mm -hmm. but the whole thing it's just like what do you do and it's like that it initially came to me like i wanted to write a kind of like a, a like a, a satirical piece on celebrity culture in in 2022 and 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 i also wanted to but but it's like someone of my age who is like may not completely understand where an 18 or 21 year old person is with that whole situation mm -hmm. um but still being a little bit fascinated and repulsed by it at the same time uh you know it's like like the opening line i met the queen of generation fame she said i'm sorry i said i'm sorry i don't know your name you know and she stared at me like i was crazy like how could you not know who i am i have 10 million followers like, well, I'm like, well, I'm not one of them, so I have no idea who you are, you know? And then, so she leans in and sarcastically says to me, who are you? And I, and I say, doesn't matter, you wouldn't know who I am anyway. And then they, have, they, they start to get into each other's lives, you know? And, and, and the guy, from this perspective, it's not a relationship song, um, but it's just sort of like, He's looking at these people's lives and they look so exciting and so fun, but but they're not, you know? And it's like, you know, we're all desperately seeking attention in this modern world of the future, you know? And the whole, I, I was never a fan of Andy Warhol, but the one thing I will say about him is his prediction that everyone would be famous for 15 minutes. It's like, we've gone beyond that. Mm -hmm. Everyone is famous for 15 seconds, you know, and even further pushing that concept, you know, infamy is as good as fame. Yeah. Being right. infamous is as good as being famous. I mean, if you, if you create a shit storm, you know, doesn't matter. It's, it's almost like the id of, of humanity has just been opened wide and it doesn't matter what you throw at the world, you know, as long as you're getting attention. I mean, you know, I think we have to be very careful. Yeah. And, you know, it's, it's interesting Sorry. too. No, Sorry, I got all heavy and weird. All right. I was, I was hoping you would, uh, you know, it's, it's interesting. You were saying, you're like, how could you not know me? I have 10,000 followers, uh, or 10 million followers. Sorry. And that's, it's so different because, you know, when, when the Goo Dolls came up, um you know the monoculture was still very much in effect if yeah. you sold 10 million cds you would have most of the world knew your name if you went yeah. diamond most of the world knew your name oh yeah you know and and i mean everybody knew i was trying to think of diamond records in the 90s like hootie and the blowfish everybody knew that term even if they you know they just knew who that was right but you're right I am so surprised over and over and over who I will find online who has that many. I'm like, there's so many people that have that many. And I don't know. I don't know who you are. How is I that? Have no How idea is who that? you are. Yeah. I, I mean, I just think that. I just think that. that 
Whereas like there were sort of gatekeepers and tastemakers and people who guided us through through traditional media channels like newspapers, magazines, television shows, things like that. Mm -hmm. It's just the whole thing has just exploded, you know, and and, uh, you know, uh, yeah, there's something for everybody. I mean, it's funny because I was talking to a friend of mine who's a very, very smart person. And he's like, think of the most ridiculous, weird thing and then Google it. Mm -hmm. And I guarantee you will find your community. And it's sort of like, whereas like in the old days, it's just like, well, I'm just a weirdo on my own doing this. It's like, now there's a community for everything. I mean, if, and he's like, there is nothing you can think up in your mind that will not be there. <laughs> and sort of like, wow, it's sort of strange. In one sense, it democratizes the whole thing. Mm. Things like, things like, you know, yeah, I, I don't I guess Facebook and Instagram and all that kind of thing. It kind of democratizes the whole thing where where the Internet has kind of democratized music in a weird way. But now that is being manipulated and controlled by, you know, a few masters of the universe, which, you know, is, it makes me very uncomfortable how power is so concentrated in the hands of the few, um, you know. Whereas like, you know, but, but, uh, but yeah, I mean, I, I don't think, I think that there is so much incredible stuff, but if it doesn't have enough makeup on, and I mean makeup in a metaphorical sense, if it's not polished and, and, and sparkly and, and, uh, viral, you know, it's like, um, it, a lot of things get overlooked and a lot of things of value get overlooked, but I don't know if value is even I, I was brought up and, and, and my um, influencers when I was growing up, um, you know, see, hey, man, you try to create something of value. You want to leave something behind. You're an artist. You try to leave something behind mm -hmm. that is of value. And uh, I don't know if that's that important anymore. I think I think the desire for fame and approval and likes, you know, um, is more important than the, than the content of what you're creating. Um, you know, uh, you know they took the the counter on the dislike button off, so you can't see how many people dislike something, right. but you can see how many people like it. So it's kind of like, like, well, I can't make an educated decision. Well, that's the point. Don't worry about it. We're going to create an algorithm. That's going to do your thinking for you. So it's like, you know, and then they and then they attach little buzzwords to it, like curated. It's like bullshit. <laughs> I don't want my life curated for me other than by me, you know, mm -hmm. and it's like, you know, the world has definitely changed. I mean, I used to hang out in an indie record shop and listen to the college radio station and subscribe to 20 different fanzines that would come to my house and they were printed on a, on a, on a copy machine and stapled together. And that's how we got ourselves out there. Mm -hmm. Now it's like you go instantly point to mass, potentially hundreds of millions of people seeing you instantly. That's kind of jarring, I think, in the evolutionary process. I think technology has outpaced the evolution of human beings and the and the and the their ability to process all this information and to make change. Change is coming at a revolutionary hyper speed now where change was a bit more gradual before. And I think we we as human beings are cognitively having a hard time keeping up with it, you know, and it's causing a lot of distress. Yeah. Well, I, I will say, um, I know we're running short on time here too, that um, it, it's interesting, especially in comparison, like listening to how you sing about these sorts of things on songs like a uh, big machine or what a scene, you know, like what yeah. we were thinking then and then what it even went further on and become, you know, that's, I don't I, know if that's good. <laughs> I don't know. You know, those songs yeah. are great, by the way, it's still great. 20 Thank years for Gutter Thank Flower. You. Yeah. I mean, 
you know, I, I'm really proud of this record, and I hope mm. everybody likes it. You know, mm. um, you know, that's really the bottom line. And it's like, you know, I never forget that. Like, what the majority of what I do is, I I, I want to entertain people. You know, I'm an entertainer as well as a writer. I like to think of myself more as a songwriter than anything else. Um, because to me, that's what's got lasting value. But um. But yeah, I mean, I like to entertain people, you know, I have, and I, I like, you know, I get really, I get, I get ticked off at other artists that I see who like, you go to see them play and you spend $200 to go see them play and they don't play their biggest hit. Uh, and I've had conversations with a couple of them about that. Like, what's, what's your problem? You know, that song bought you a mansion. Like, what is your problem? You're shitting on your audience, you know? by being a pretentious, you know, prima donna. Don't do that. It's not good. Well, I I'll close by saying um, thank you for all the hits through the oh, years. Oh, man. I'm Seriously. lucky. Yeah. And this lucky. this album, I, I, you know, I, I, I meant it. This instantly became one of my favorite records you did. When I heard it, it just, it sounded so perfect to me. And the songs are so well written and done. So, um so Johnny, dude, congratulations on this. Uh, th this record, Chaos and Bloom, it's outstanding, really. I was gonna say, you know, just if, in closing, I you don't look like you're old enough to have a 14 year old kid. <laughs> you guys, does he? You get mistaken for brothers? <laughs> well, that'd be funny. I'm 40 now, so uh, you know, I'm, uh, I'm oh starting to appreciate those moments right there. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, I tell you, man, I know I didn't have a kid until I was 50, and I'm like, oh my god, is my back gonna hold out? <laughs> <laughs> yeah no i i had him uh, you know my my uh his mom had him in in our 20s so you know yeah no it's 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 happened now so i appreciate that no well, filters though i'm not using internet filters so i haven't gone that far oh no 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 don't bother <laughs> you don't need them don't need you don't em. need them all right man thank you so much it's always a pleasure talking to you i cannot wait to hear these songs live there it's gonna be fun i'm looking forward to the tour this summer right on all right. We'll, we'll, we'll see you out there. We'll come out there. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right, man. We'll see you around. Thank you. Good to see you. You too. Bye. Bye. -bye.